Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. I got a text from Mindy. Uh, she is with Temples of Jesus channel. Make sure to subscribe to her. She's the one that has this video called Only Two Things Left Before a Second Coming. You may want to see that if you haven't seen it already. Uh, in fact, I think I'll put a link for that in the description box below. But she sent me a text pointing me to this. This is my mission, which this is like a missionary uh, service where uh, friends and family members can use their service to send letters uh, to their mission. I can't remember exactly how it works. Uh, in fact, I think that my wife, Jenica, used this while I was on my mission. <laughs> oh, she just said in the background that she did. Yeah, my mission. So uh, there's this update from President Marquis. Date, March 26, 2020. And uh, Mindy said, I think you already have this, but just in case. And no, I did not already have this. And I'm really glad that she sent it to me. Okay, so at the end it says, Allow me to end with this quote from President Dallin H. Oaks following at a missionary meeting in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, last Saturday, March 14th, 2020. Quote, This is not the end of the world, but merely a test. A trial run for the second coming, if you will. Physically and spiritually. If you've been following the counsel from the prophet about ministering, emergency preparedness, and at-home church, you have no need to fear. You pass the test. Now, a couple more things to say about this. First, I wanted to get like a more solid source. I wanted to see if this was published anywhere else, and it was. So there's this uh, website by BYU, New Testament Commentary. If you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see... Uh, copyright 2014 Brigham Young University, all rights reserved. So this is a BYU website. And uh, this is a, a paper or an article written by Richard D. Draper. I looked him up. This is him, BYU Religious Studies Center. Richard D. Draper is a professional emeritus at Brigham Young University who taught Old Testament, New Testament, Pearl of Great Price, Book of Mormon, and the Book of Revelation. Okay, so that's who wrote this. And right here, he included this very same quote. So let's read the quote again and read what he said uh, around the quote. The Lord has revealed all this for a purpose, as a warning to the world and also to his church. To us, he has stated very clearly in Doctrine and Covenants 97, 25 through 26, quote, Zion shall escape if she observe to do all things whatsoever I have commanded her. But if she observe not to do whatsoever I have commanded her, I will visit her according to all her works with sore affliction, with pestilence, with plague, with sword, with vengeance, with devouring fire, end quote. Given the attitude, counsel, and instructions from leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints today, it appears the church has successfully dodged that bullet so far. Our leaders exude optimism and encouragement. Let me highlight that. Some of you guys are frightened uh, when you think about the second coming. And I don't think that you should be as long as you're doing what you know you need to do. That's not to say that we won't experience additional suffering and, um, as we wait for the second coming to happen. But at large, the church is going to make it through just fine. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. All right, continuing. Reflecting this is a statement made by President Dallin A. Jokes on March 14th, 2020. He stated concerning our present distress, quote, this is not the end of the world, but merely a test, a trial run for the second coming, if you will, physically and spiritually. If you've been following the counsel from the prophet about ministering, emergency preparedness, and at-home church, you have no need to fear. You passed the test. You guys, that's a big thing to say, that you passed the test in this trial run for the second coming. Okay, continuing. His statement does not mean that people don't need to be careful and diligent. Indeed, they must do all they can to be both prepared and protected, as Joseph Smith explained, quote, 
concerning the coming of the Son of Man, that it is a, it is a false idea that the saints will escape all the judgments while the wicked shall, su- shall suffer, for all flesh is subject to suffer, and the righteous shall hardly escape. Still, many of the saints will escape, for the just shall live by faith, yet many of the righteous shall fall prey to disease, to pestilence, etc., by reason of the weakness of the flesh, and yet be saved in the kingdom of God. So that it is an unhallowed principle to say that such and such have transgressed because they have been preyed upon by disease or death, for all uh, flesh is subject to death. End quote. The persistent point is that the saints are to be wise and should protect themselves by being independent of all adverse influences and by following sound procedures of spiritual and temporal preparation. Um, I want to point out, you guys, you know, we are in the last days and uh, it's included this entire dispensation. We have members of the church that have died in wars. We have members of the church that have died from disease and plague and pestilence. Uh, recently, I have a subscriber. Her name is Lori Hast. There was this uh, big tornado outbreak this year that started in Utah, by the way, in the Salt Lake Valley. We've covered that before. And uh, she lives in Iowa near Council Bluffs, and her home was destroyed. And she's a very good person. I, I can tell. I've talked to her. Um, and I'm just going to post this again. I, I have it in the in the description box of each video, but I just want to highlight this since we're talking about this today. This is their GoFundMe. Help Jim and Lori's recovery after tornado. And so far, there have been 55 donations. If you can spare anything, you guys, please do so. Uh, the link is in the description box below. But you have people within my own audience that have been affected by natural disasters. Uh, we have a war raging in Ukraine, which involves both Ukrainians and Russians. And we do have members of the church in those countries. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are serving on both sides of the war. And there's so much more. It's happening. <clears throat> now, let's get back to this date over here. So this quote was given in a talk on March 14th, 2020. So let's take a closer look at that. So here's March 2020. Okay. Um, at this point, the pandemic was starting to make its way into the United States. So <clears throat> in red, this is the day that the talk was given. And we got this quote from President Dallin H. Oaks. And then it was the next week, interestingly, on Wednesday. This is when there was the earthquake in the Salt Lake Valley that caused the trumpet of the angel Moroni to fall. And many of us feel that this was indeed a sign. When you have the flagship temple of the church and the angel Moroni of that temple drops its trumpet, which I didn't even know was possible. And it's happening at a time that um, the pandemic is, you know, making its way across the world. And then two days later, Okay, this was March 20th. So just two days after that, that's when missionary work was suspended, hindered, changed, altered uh, from, you know, the way that we normally operate. And then it was uh, six days after that. So the 25th of March was the last day that the, t that the temples were open. And then, and then on the 26th, that's when that was like the first full day that they were closed. Uh, you had this happen. So um, it's interesting because let's look at the calendar again. Down H. Oaks, I mean, maybe the church already saw this coming because this was just like a week or two later that uh, they changed missionary work and then a week after that that they closed the temple. So maybe uh, they were already planning on doing this or knew that this was a possibility. But he said that before all this happened. And I, I doubt that the church knew that the angel Moroni was going to drop his trumpet uh, just the next week. So it's just really interesting. But uh, when he was talking about that, he was talking about uh, the pandemic. That was the context. And the pandemic was just like in, in the very beginning stages. Um, 
you know, pretty much all of 2020 and most of 2021, those are kind of, that's kind of like the primary time that we had this trial of uh, the pandemic. And I do think that that's what he was referring to. And, you know, I've done a couple of videos talking about the fact that I think it was a big testing time uh, for all of us, uh, just like what he said to see if we were spiritually and temporally prepared. Uh, my understanding is that there's some people that because they're because we didn't meet in church on Sundays, uh, you're supposed to stay at home. Some people didn't come back, like people that already weren't doing so well at church, maybe had weak testimonies, were struggling to stay active. So it seems like some of those people failed the test. I feel like a lot of a lot of other people failed the test in the way that they treated each other. Uh, over these divisive it, divisive issues such as wearing masks and and other things. I'm not going to get into that. Um, there was also a lot of tension socially uh, in the United States that year because um, there was a movement that started after a certain arrest. And uh, again, it was a divisive issue and there was just a lot of contention in 2020. And so I've talked about the fact that I think that we need to do better. If that was like a trial run or a practice test, we should learn from it. We should, we should look at how we failed, how we could have done better temporally, spiritually, and, um, you know, how we treat others and just be prepared for the future when something like this happens again, if it does. And I'm sure it will. Uh, in fact, I feel like the years 2020 and 2024 kind of go together in terms of craziness. And especially since uh, we're waiting to see what happens with the elections here in the United States, uh, it's either way it goes, it's probably gonna be pretty divisive um, in the aftermath of uh, the election results. So, all right, well, there's one last thing I want to do. So I've added this quote, if you want to refer to it again, I have it on my spreadsheet called Quotes, Second Coming. So it's just right here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you may be asking why these cells in these um, columns are empty. It's because the old format used to look like this, but I'm trying to consolidate all this information, you know, uh, office, speaker, and reference all in the same cell. So now it's going to look like this, but it just takes time for me to switch everything over. It's a long-term project. So what I thought would be good is to kind of see what was being said around this time. And so there's a few quotes that I want to read. The first one is really pretty stunning, I think. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so this is uh, Stephen J. Lund, Young Men General President. And this is from a YouTube video uh, posted by A Warning Voice. And... Um, you know, I'll just, I'll go ahead and I'll post that or I'll put that in the description box below. Nelson. Okay. But let me go ahead and read it. I transcribed it. Okay. Just a few months ago, I got a phone call from a fellow I knew. He said, Hey, I got a new job. And I said, Oh, congratulations. Where are you working now? He says, well, I'm actually president Nelson's assistant executive secretary. And I said, wow, that's a great job. I love your boss. And he said, yeah, I love him too. Actually, he wants to talk to you. And I said, well, okay. When he says, how about tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? And so, okay. Any hints? And he laughed and he said, no, just come on down. And so we hung up. I looked at my wife and I'm very intuitive about these things. And I thought, I thought about that. Well, I've been serving on the Young Men's uh, General Board for five years. The old presidency is being released. President Nelson is such a remarkable human being. Isn't this great? He's going to tell us thank you for my... He's going to tell, tell us thank you for my five years of service and don't call us, we'll call you, you know, and send me down the road. But what a nice thing for him to do. And so I walked in, I walked in completely clueless I'd been in his office with my wife for about 15 seconds. He pulled up a chair or he pulled the chair up and was just sitting knee to knee with me. And he said, Steve, we brought you up here actually to call you to be the young men's general president. My brain just kind of turned off just then because I had just no 
Uh, that's that's how spiritually attuned I am. I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming at all. I guess I stammered a little bit, and he said, "Well, will you take the job?" And I said, "Well, of course, President Nelson," but with fear and trembling. And he kind of sat back in his chair, a little disgusted, and said, "Well, I hope with a little joy too." And I said, "Well, I'm sure the joy will come when the shock wears off." And he says. Well, it's important that you're here, and it's important that you understand this because this is a very important time for the church. You know, we're in the end of times here, and this is a very important time for the youth of the church. And then he stood up and walked behind his chair and says, You know, I've called them. I've invited them to serve in the Lord's battalions. And I said, Yes, President Nelson, I know that you have, and I know that they're listening. And he said, Well, I hope so. I know that many are because... This is such an important time of gathering, and the opportunity for them to be engaged in that work of gathering has never been like this before. Then he went on for about 10 minutes talking without taking a breath, you know, 95-year-old President Nelson, and just his whole visage uh, just lighted up with enthusiasm. He talked to me about this final work of the gathering and his deployment of the youth of the church to make that happen. Uh, this thing that has been talked about by apostles and prophets as long as there have been people on this earth, looking forward to the end game, when the earth will be rolled up like a scroll and the Savior will come again. And I walked out of that room just with this intense understanding and knowledge confirmed to me by the Spirit that I share with you, and that is that he's coming. He really is, and it's imminent I don't know what that means. All I know is that there's a sense of urgency about the brethren. Uh, urgency being a word that started off this last general conference with President Holland's talk. Okay, the next one. Okay, so that was, I don't know the exact date, but based on when he was called, it was sometime between, I believe, the October 2019 general conference and the 2020, the April 2020 general conference. Okay. So there's that. Again, I'm wanting to look at these quotes surrounding uh, the main quote of this video by President Dallin H. Oaks, which we're going to read one more time. Okay, this one is from President Nelson, the 1st of January, 2020, so New Year's Day. Uh, this was published in, let's see, a church news article uh, by... Sarah Jane Weaver, President Nelson extends important invitation to all Latter-day Saints in 2020. All right, he says, It is your personal preparation that will help April's General Conference become for you not only memorable, but unforgettable. The time to act is now. This is a hinge point in the history of the church, and your part is vital. Okay, and then let's return to this quote by President Dallin H. Oaks. Uh, given in Las Vegas at a meeting for missionaries. Um, he says, This is not the end of the world, but merely a test, a trial run for the second coming, if you will, physically and spiritually. If you've been following the counsel from the prophet about ministering, emergency preparedness, and at-home church, you have no need to fear. You passed the test. And then the last one that I want to share uh, let's see, this is from the April 2020 Ensign. It's an article written by President Nelson called The Future of the Church, Preparing the World for the Savior's Second Coming. Today, the Lord's work in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is moving forward at an accelerated pace. The Church will have an unprecedented, unparalleled future. I hath not seen nor ear heard the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. We are just building up to the climax of this last dispensation, when the Savior's second coming becomes a reality. And then later on in the article, the time is coming when those who do not obey the Lord will be separated from those who do. And that's kind of the biggest thing, isn't it? It's nice to be prepared temporally, and we should be. We should have food storage, have 72-hour kits, um, have an emergency preparedness plan. But more important than that is making sure that you're, you're where you're supposed to be spiritually. And I would encourage you to get your temple recommend 
or renew it if it's about to expire or if it has expired um, and be worthy to have one. I think that's going to be your um, your best assurance and your greatest protection is being temple worthy. So do that. Uh, go to church. If you're currently not going to church, you should go to church. Um, just do all the things that you know you need to do. Uh, this is not a time to fool around. So it seems that we've already gone through the trial run, the trial run, quote unquote, for the second coming. So maybe the real thing is next. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.